Welcome back to our channel. I'm your host, and this is The Crime Files, where we bring you captivating crime stories of all time. Today, we delve into the intriguing world of outlaw motorcycle clubs. So if it's just paying the pagans, sooner or later, one of these two guys is going to end up getting into a fight with each other, so we just like to fight. Shining a spotlight on one of the most notorious and feared groups out there, the Pagans Motorcycle Club, especially the involvement with the unsolved case of a young girl. So, join us as we uncover 10 things you didn't know about the Pagans Motorcycle Club. Number 1. Pagans Identify as One Percenter Did you know that the Pagans proudly identify as One Percenter? No, I don't mean the wealthy elite. These troublemaking bikers belong to the notorious One Percent, the outlaws who live by their own rules. The American Motorcyclist Association claims that 99% of bikers in the U.S. are law-abiding citizens. However, pagans do not consider themselves a member of that majority. Instead, they belong to the one percenter group of motorcyclists and are hence labeled as an OMG, Outlaw Motorcycle Gang, for their flagrant disregard of the law. Their criminal acts range from simple theft to extortion and even murder. The gang has been linked to drug trafficking, bombings, and the sale of firearms. Number 2. Emblems and Symbols When it comes to their style, the pagans don't hold back. MC members don leather or denim vests adorned with intriguing patches. You'll spot their emblem, the Norse Fire Giant Surtur, sitting on the sun wielding a sword. Surtur, a figure from Norse mythology, represents destruction during Ragnarok, the end of times. But the patches don't stop there. Look closer, you'll find numbered patches like the infamous 13, which holds multiple meanings. 12 jurors and one judge, the 13th letter of the alphabet, or the 13 founders. A five patch hints at Nazi affiliations, while symbols like skulls, crossbones, wings, and Third Reich imagery reveal more about each member. Interestingly, the pagans don't display their chapter names on their vests to hide where they come from. This complicates the ability of law enforcement to investigate and solve crimes involving the pagans. A member's jacket is an essential symbol of his membership and should be treated as such. Number 3. The Birth of a Brotherhood Let's travel back to 1957 when 13 men, led by Lou Dobkin, came together in Prince George's County, Maryland, to form a brotherhood united by their love for riding. The Pagans Motorcycle Club officially emerged in 1958. Until the 1960s, the organization was relatively tiny and peaceful. The club's reputation for mischief grew with the membership, as the new leader attracted thousands of new members. New people meant new connections to drugs and violence. The organization established its roots in Prince George's County, Maryland, but by the 1960s had spread rapidly throughout the region and beyond. They became one of the most powerful MCs on the East Coast and Mid-Atlantic via criminal behavior and alliances with similar groups. With at least 44 established chapters, they are still one of the country's most sizable MCs. Number 4. Women in the Shadows Now. Let's shed light on an often misunderstood aspect of the Pagans Motorcycle Club, the role of women. Even though women have no privileges inside the club, several investigations have shown that they may have had minor parts in the illegal operations of the organization. No woman, regardless whether she is an old lady or a honey, is given any information on the Pagans' activities. This policy applies to all genders. The wife or long-term girlfriend of a pagan MC member is referred to as an old lady in the organization. An elderly woman has the right to wear a distinctive patch or any other indicator that identifies her as the property of another organization member. You know the real shocker, it is acceptable for members of an MC to have more than one elderly woman. Number 5. A Show of Class Let's discuss a fascinating chapter in the Pagans' history, the era of John Satan Marin, the club's first official president. Pagans went through a period of significant restructuring in the 1960s after their foundation in the late 1950s. A constitution, a council of leaders, and a president are the results of this process. 
Originally, Marin led the criminal organization Sons of Satan MC out of central Pennsylvania. Marin chose to make peace with the invading pagans MC instead of retaliating violently as they started to infringe on Sons of Satan territory. Eventually, he and a few others patched over the pagans MC. When Marin took office as president, the club paid him $100,000 yearly, the same amount that the United States president earned. As they put it, this was a show of class. The Sons of Satan MC morphed into a pagan MC fan group. The Sons of Satan are still very much alive and well in Pennsylvania. They now have a P for pagan on their jackets. Number six, the ultimate rivalry. Revving our engines toward rivalries, we encounter the legendary clash between the pagans and the Hells Angels, the ultimate biker showdown. Run-ins between these two groups often erupt in violence, fueled by territorial disputes. Interestingly, the pagans are considered the more dangerous of the two. The FBI even dubs them the most violent crime organization in America. While the Hells Angels have members with diverse backgrounds, including lawyers and dentists, the pagans remain hardcore outlaws, fully committed to the biker lifestyle. It's even rumored that pagans have executed members who switched allegiances to the Hells Angels. Talk about a rivalry that revs up the adrenaline. Number seven, the group is now moving away from white supremacy. The Pagans Motorcycle Club is notorious for its association with white supremacy, but did you know that the group has recently undergone a surprising transformation? Traditionally, joining the Pagans required being of legal age, owning a motorcycle, and being white. The white cloud on their patch symbolized white supremacy. However, in recent years, the club has seen a shift. Under the leadership of Keith Conan Richter, the new club president, they focused on increasing membership and have opened their doors to individuals of diverse ethnic backgrounds. This change hasn't come without controversy, with some members expressing discontent. Nevertheless, the pagans have expanded their activities and membership, even reaching Puerto Rico. Talk about a surprising twist in their story. Number 8. Biker War Let's shift gears and dive into a darker chapter of biker history, the infamous Quebec Biker War. The conflict between the Hells Angels MC and the Rock Machine MC turned the Canadian province into a battleground. As the Hells Angels sought to expand their control over the drug trade, violence erupted resulting in the deaths of over 160 individuals. Amidst this chaos, the Pagans considered joining forces with the Rock Machine MC against their common enemy, the Hells Angels. However, in the end, they decided not to venture into the tumultuous territory of the Great White North. Number 9. Prospective Members Joining the Pagans is no easy task. Prospective members, known as prospects, face a grueling journey to prove their loyalty. They must be sponsored by a current member and endure weeks of hostile treatment. But here's the catch. Prospects must do anything a member requests, as long as it's something the member would do. Loyalty is paramount in the MC world, and the Pagans place the club's needs above all else, even their own families. Federal agent Ken Croak who spent years undercover with the Pagans, highlighted the importance of loyalty within the organization. It's a commitment that goes beyond blood ties. Number 10. The Unsolved Mystery Now, prepare for the most bone-chilling tale that has haunted the Pagans for decades. In 1974, young Amy Billing vanished in Coconut Grove, Florida. Rumors pointed fingers at bikers, but the case remained unsolved until a shocking revelation emerged in 1996. A pagan member on his deathbed confessed to his wife about Amy's abduction, drugging, violation, and murder. According to the confession, her body was left in the Everglades. Yet, despite the lead, her remains have never been found. Today, the search continues, leaving Amy's family and detectives determined to bring closure to this heart-wrenching mystery. That concludes our journey through the secrets of the Pagans Motorcycle Club. What other outlaw criminal organizations do you want us to explore? Leave your answers in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to never miss an episode.